Welcome back, everyone. In today's lesson, we are going to look at an overview of inter-VLAN routing. This is when we want to communicate between different VLANs across the network. What is inter-VLAN routing? Now, layer two switches cannot forward traffic between VLANs without the assistance of a router because routing is done in layer three. So for a switch to forward traffic between different VLANs, then it needs the assistance of the router. Inter-VLAN routing is a process for forwarding network traffic from one VLAN to another using a router. Now, if you remember, if you want to forward within the same VLAN, switches can handle that. But when you want to forward traffic between different VLANs, if you look at the figure, if you want to forward traffic between VLAN 10 and VLAN 30, then you would need a layer 3 device. So there are three options for inter-VLAN routing. There is the legacy inter-VLAN routing, the router on a stick, and layer 3 switching using SVIs. So legacy inter-VLAN routing is a legacy solution, meaning it's old. It doesn't scale well, so it's not really used these days. Router on a stick, this is an acceptable solution for a small to medium sized network, but if it is more than 50 VLANs, then router on a stick is not going to work. Layer 3 switch using switched virtual interface or SVIs, this is the most scalable solution for medium to large organizations. So in the past, router interfaces were used to route between VLANs. Each VLAN was connected to a different physical router interface. So if you see here, we have VLAN 10 and VLAN 30, we have two interfaces, one for VLAN 10 and one for VLAN 30. Packets would arrive on the router through one interface, be routed and leave through another. So for example, if a packet comes from VLAN 10, it will go through here, be routed and come up through this interface. Because the router interfaces were connected to VLANs and had IP addresses for that specific VLAN, routing between VLANs was achieved. Large networks with large number of VLANs require many router interfaces. And if you notice, that routers don't have that many interfaces. The first inter-VLAN routing solution relied on using a router with multiple Ethernet interfaces. Each router interface was connected to a switch port in different VLANs the router interfaces served as the default gateways to the local host, meaning that this IP address here on this router interface is the gateway for this PC. And this IP address in this interface of the router is the gateway for this PC. Legacy inter-VLAN routing using physical interfaces works, but it has a significant limitation. It is not reasonably scalable because routers have limited number of physical interfaces. As mentioned, requiring one physical router interface per VLAN quickly exhausts the physical interface capacity of a router. It is good to note that this method of inter-VLAN routing is no longer implemented, but I am introducing it here so that we know how inter-VLAN routing grew. The router on a stake inter-VLAN routing approach uses only one of the router's physical interface. Rather than use multiple interface like the legacy approach, this approach used just one interface. One of the router's physical interfaces is configured as an 802.1Q trunk port so it can understand VLAN tags. Now, normal routers, they don't handle VLANs. So you have to configure the router with the 802.1Q so that it can understand the tags. Logical sub-interfaces are created, one sub-interface per VLAN. VLAN members' hosts are configured to use the sub-interface address as the default gateway. Let's look at this example. It has three different VLANs, right? If we are following the legacy approach, then this router would need to put up three different interfaces for that three different VLANs. But on router on a stick, rather than give each VLAN their own interface, it has one interface dedicated to inter-VLAN routing, and then all of these different VLANs are created as sub-interfaces 
of that interface. The router on a stick inter-VLAN routing method overcomes the limitation of the legacy inter-VLAN routing method. It only requires one physical Ethernet interface to route traffic between multiple VLANs on a network. We don't waste router interfaces. A Cisco IOS router Ethernet interface is configured as an 802.1Q trunk and connected to a trunk port on a layer 2 switch. Specifically, the router interface is configured using sub-interfaces to identify routable VLANs. The configured sub-interfaces are software-based virtual interfaces. Each is associated with a single physical Ethernet interface. Sub-interfaces are configured in software on a router. Each sub-interface is independently configured with an IP address and a VLAN assignment. Although they are sub-interfaces, they have their own IP addresses and their own assignment to a specific VLAN. When VLAN tagged traffic enters the router interface, it is forwarded to the VLAN sub-interface. After a routing decision is made based on the destination IP network address, the network determines the exit interface for the traffic. And because it is connected to the VLAN, it's most probably another sub-interface. Now let's look at a modern method of inter-VLAN routing. This method uses the layer 3 switches and switch virtual interfaces, or SVI. An SVI is a virtual interface that is configured on a layer 3 switch as shown in the figure. So instead of using a router, we are using a switch with routing capabilities, or a layer 3 switch. A layer 3 switch is sometimes called a multi-layer switch because it operates on layer 2 and layer 3. Inter-VLAN SVIs are created the same way that the management VLAN interface is configured. The SVI is created for a VLAN that exists on a switch. Although virtual, the SVI performs the same functions for the VLAN as the router interface would. Specifically, it provides layer 3 processing for the packets that are sent to or from all switch ports associated with that VLAN. There are some advantages of using a layer 3 switch on inter-VLAN routing. Layer 3 switches are much faster than router on a stick. There is no need for external links from the switch to the router for routing. They are not limited to one link because layer 2 either channels can be used as trunk links between switches to increase bandwidth. Latency is much lower because data doesn't need to leave the switch in order to be routed to a different network. So you cut out the middleman, so to speak. This is more commonly deployed in a campus LAN rather than routers. The only disadvantage is that layer 3 switches are more expensive. So when you are designing a network, these are the things that you need to think about. Is it a big network? Is it a small network? What are the costs that you have? So having knowledge is always good. So that is the interview and routing overview. I'm just going to jump in a little bit and show you the legacy interview and routing. Although legacy interview and routing is not used anymore, I believe that as network administrators, you have to have a knowledge of it. So let's look at an overview. Legacy inter-VLAN routing requires routers to have multiple interface switches. As we mentioned before, legacy inter-VLAN routing requires routers to have multiple physical interfaces. Each one of the router's physical interfaces is connected to a unique VLAN. So in this case, there are two different VLANs. We need two different interfaces on the router. Each interface is also configured with an IP address from the subnet associated with the particular VLAN. Network devices use the router as a gateway to access the devices connected to the VLAN. So let's look at how this is being configured. So configure the VLANs on the switch and then assign the ports to their respective VLANs. This is normal in a VLAN. You have to create a VLAN, assign interfaces to it, so that the holes that is attached to those interfaces are assigned to those VLANs. So here we have PC1, which is in VLAN 10, and we have PC3, which is in VLAN 30. And just as a reminder, every VLAN is a different subnet. 
on the router, you have to configure the interfaces. For example, here, interface G00, because it is attached to VLAN 10, it must be within the same subnet. So give it an IP address within that same subnet. And then don't forget to write no shutdown. The same thing is done for G01, which is attached to VLAN 30. Again, interface G01, IP address, the IP address and the subnet mask, and then no shutdown. Pretty easy, isn't it? That is all you have to do in the legacy inter-VLAN routing. Yes, it is easy, but it can be really costly as the network grows because you have to have a lot of router interfaces if you have a lot of VLAN. So that is the end of today's lesson. In the next lesson, we will focus on inter-VLAN routing using router on a stick. And until then, goodbye.